Good evening and welcome to All Medias. In our previous session, I just uh, missed to explain one thing regarding the E cells of enterochromatin cells. These enterochromatin cells are responsible to synthesize and secrete the specific protein known as histamine which uh, binds the specific histamine receptor which is present in the P cell of cell receptor and thereby stimulate the P cells to secrete the hydrochloric acid. Okay. That was for, forgotten by me. And uh, one more thing I want to remind you that we had studied uh, so many types of cells but at the same time keep in mind our P cell, then C cells, then E cells, then okay. Uh, these are mainly present in the cardiac body and fundus of our stomach okay one more is the foveolar cells f cells so foveolar cells endochromatin cells then chief cell then parietal cells etc etc Specifically located in cardiac body and fundus of our stomach. And at the same time, the gastrin producing cells and the somatin, somatostatin producing cells. That means the G cells and D cells. So, G cells and D cells are presented in the pyloric part of the stomach only. Okay, not in the cardiac and um, uh, cardiac in the or the body or the fundus of the stomach. So in um, body or in cardiac or in fundus P, C, E and F cells and only uh, G and D cells are present in the pyloric area ok then in a normal way let us know the process of digestion. As you know, immediately after food, we want to take a rest, either physical rest or mental rest, or automatically we will get some rest. So, let us see what happened our body immediately after food. So, immediately after food, our Central nervous system is getting activated, particularly the parasympathetic parasympathetic nervous system and the Activation of the parasympathetic nervous system 
that uh, releases a particular neurotransmitter known as acetyl choline. Okay. This acetyl choline from the CNS acetyl choline. From the CNS, the acetyl choline it get uh, attached with the binding receptor of the enterochromatin cells or the E cells. And thereby the enterochromatin cell that uh, secrete a specific or uh, uh, protein known as histamine. Okay. This histamine will attach with the or tra traveling and it get uh, attached with the specific receptor which is present at the present in the parietal cells okay and the presence of histamine causes increased secretion of hydrochloric acid okay that is the mechanism of conditional and unconditional reflex how our secretions are usually getting regulated and at the same time there is a counter reaction can also be seen in the stomach that is especially from the pylorus of the stomach. As you know the pyloric area are equipped with the specialized cells known as D cells which secrete the somatostatin and the same somatostatin that will inhibit the P cells and thereby inhibit the in somatostatin somatostatin inhibit the P cells and thereby reduction of the synthesis of hydrochloric acid. That means the somatostatin and the histamines. Somatostatin and histamine acting as the here the histamine acting as accelerator and the somatostatin acting as a break. So, balance the release of the brake and accelerator results in a very nice or smooth driving, something like that. A balanced balance between the somatostatin and histamine that will keep the lumen of the stomach with a pH of 1.32 3 to 3.5 of gastric acid. That is the mechanism. Okay, then once more let us try to understand how the hydrochloric acid is getting synthesized. Secretion of hydrochloric acid. It is our P cells, okay, and uh, that means it is the mucosa of our stomach, and the mucosa is equipped with the or supplied by. 
blood supply from celiac trunk okay so carbon dioxide which is present in our blood getting bind with the water molecule present in the pieces okay blood okay so the carbon dioxide which is present in our blood is getting bind with the water molecule and thereby forming carbonic acid it is very very with a very weak bonding and that is why it get a dissociate very easily and thereby uh, the carbonic acid releases one proton that is h plus hydrogen and the same is converted into bicarbonate hco3 h2co3 that is the carbonic acid h2co3 carbonic acid getting split into carbonic acid releases a proton that is hydrogen and with a bicarbonate this h plus ion that is h plus ions okay this h plus ions again bind with a chloride of plasma chloride that is see it and thereby production of hcl these are the mechanism which uh, help us to maintain the normal acid regulation or normal ph of our stomach and all these qualities can be achieved by the e cells number one by receptor of ace receptor ace receptor through which the acetyl choline can get a stimulation okay cholinergic receptors then with the endochromatin cells that uh, that gives that get a bind with the H2 receptor that is histamine receptor. So ACE receptor, histamine receptor or H2 receptor. Okay, then with the other cell that is the gastrin. It also stimulates the synthesis of. Uh, it stimulates the parietal cell and thereby synthesis of hydrochloric acid gastrin okay can you follow me okay so that is the chemistry or secrets behind a normal healthy stomach a balance between the acid and carbonates or bicarbonates that means mucosa protects the stomach from the auto digestion and there is a very strong acid media 
but at the same time our mucosa may get a eroded or corroded by various factors and that may results in that may results in erosion that means the breach of continuity of the mucosa only up to the mucosal level and when it is the when the erosion uh, pierces the area beyond the mucosa into the submucosa and from the submucosa into the muscularis such condition is known as ulceration or ulcer and depending on the location of ulcer the ulcer is again divided into mainly into two as gastric acid and duodenal ulcer and this gastric and duodenal ulcers are collectively known as peptic ulcer okay the pepsin plays the great important role or the prime cause of the ulceration along with the hydrochloric acid that is why the name peptic ulcer so that uh, we have to study the process of peptic ulceration about its uh, epidemiology about the etiopathology about the clinical features about the differential diagnosis complications management then treatment options etc can be studied in our next class thank you for watching thank you